I have been asked in almost every video and every post, what tools do you use? What pencil is that? What brush is that? What do you use? What's the tools? What's the magic tools? Um, and so I've been promising a video to go over the tools and here we go. We're there. Um, first, we're going to start off with pencils. Um, this is Collie Race. It's Prismacolor Collie Race. And this is blue. As you can see there, it's uh, 20044 is the blue, regular blue. Um, back in the day, I think people did non-photo blue, but it doesn't really matter anymore because scanners are so good and computers are so good and Photoshop so good. So I just like blue. I'm used to the color. Um, animators, some animators that I met back in the day used the blue. And this is before Prismacolor bought Color Race. So the, the recipe changed a little bit, which I kind of miss the old, the old ones, but that's neither here nor there. But you can see here, you know, it just gets really nice light and blue. This can help when you go to ink, it helps with the contrast for me, where when you're laying down those ink lines, you know what you're inking and you can see a little bit better. And this is a colored pencil, so it's a little softer and I like to sketch softer. You can see like I'm very much a crazy sketcher, so I need, I need some soft stuff so I can really get in there and get wacky with it. You know, you can see where it can, it can get dark if you want and you know, Sometimes it's just cool to do drawings with just the, the blue pencil. So, but so you can see there, it's fun, uh, very easy, very smooth, glides over paper well. So this is the Collie Race Blue. That's what I use mostly for under drawings. But I'll also pull out this really special tool that is very difficult to find. I had to travel to a mountaintop to find it at some secret art monastery. And it is um, a number two pencil. Yep. Old school, go to school, pull out your number two pencil. That's literally uh, what I draw with. If I'm not using blue, uh, just any number two pencil will do. Um, that's the thing is I used to actually think that I needed special art pencils. <laughs> I need to go to Dick Blick or, you know, the art supply store and, and get special pencils that, you know, would make my art better. And what I realized was like, uh, the tool is not the thing that does it. It's, uh, what you do with the tools. So, um, you know what, just for the, an art pencil that does, that makes the same line is about three times the cost. You can go to Amazon or Target or anywhere and buy giant packs of number two pencils for next to nothing. So save money, uh, grab you some traditional number two pencils and start drawing. So there, there's our drawings. Uh, we're going to do Collie Race blue pencil for if you want to do light blue and it and really not have to totally erase a ton underneath after you ink and scan and get rid of the colors. And then we've got the beautiful number two secret weapon pencil. That is for the pencils. Um, so now we're going to jump in to brushes. What I ink a lot with is this, is a Kuretake number 13 brush pen. So you see here, before we start, before we start getting into it, I will open this up. And what I do is I don't use the cartridge and ink that they give me. I order an ink converter. And this one is a Lamy, L-A-M-Y ink converter. <clears throat> and I fill it with um, my own ink because um, I like the control a little bit better. The, the ink that comes with this is a little watery and it runs and I can't control it very much. So I use, um, I use Speedball Super Black for inside of this. This, I just buy a big jug of this. And um, the cool thing about this, um, this uh, converter is you unplug this, this whole thing, dip it in your ink, twist the red cap, and it sucks the ink up into the, the converter. And then you plug it into the pen and you're ready to go. So we'll show you the lines that you can get with this. It's really, really, really good sharp pen, especially with that super, that, so you can see here, I can get in there and really get some good fine lines with this brush pen. The ink flows, you can get in there and get bigger. So it's it's a really versatile pen and it's nylon tip. You can't see that here because it's all sucked to thing, but they're just synthetic, synthetic bristles. 
So it acts like a brush. You can get some dry brush strokes if you want. So it, it's pretty versatile. I mean, it's, you know, nothing's going to be using a real brush. But this one to me is like, it's like a precision brush pen. Um, in a second, we're going to talk about the, the Pentel pocket brush, but I will always usually prefer this because it's a little, I can control it a little bit more. And again, this is all personal preference. I've seen, I've seen surgeons with the artistic surgeons with the Pentel pocket brush. I'm a little heavy handed. So the pocket brush doesn't work as good for me. And the, the pocket brush ink is a little, little extra runny for me. So the super black with this, you can see, you know, you guys have probably seen my videos a lot. This is the, the this is the pen that I'm using most of the time. Um, but it's really nice and versatile, thick, can get really big, thick lines if I want. Really big, nice and thick lines. Come back in, you wanna ramp that tip back up. And there we go. So, Kuretake brush pen, I think it's the number 13. I've been ordering it for, God, at this point, I'm pretty sure 14 years. Um, you can, um, let's see here. So this is real time. I'm not doing a lot. I'm not doing editing on this video. I'm just going to jump in, I think, and let you guys see real time. You could order uh, tip replacements because every now and then the tips wear out or too much ink is on there. So you can clean these just like you can a brush. Just run through some water, let it dry. So there you go. That's that brush pen. Now we've got, this is probably the most common brush pen out there, the Pintail Pocket Brush. Um, again, it comes with its own cartridges right? That's just the Pentel ink. And it's really good ink and it's pretty waterproof. Um, so if you want to do stuff over it, it's pretty solid. Um, before I get into the lines, I want to show you guys what you, what else you can do with it. Um, you could put in that cartridge. So in that cartridge that we showed you there, that was, it's hard to pour ink directly in it the way they designed it. But I have, um, I have one brush uh, or I usually keep one, I don't have it right now, filled with the Koh-i-Noor Universal Drawing Ink, and I will insert it with a syringe, like an ink syringe. This is for re refilling printer ink, but you can, you know, suck up from a bottle and then put it in the tip of this when you pull it out and insert it and fill that up with ink, your, your own ink, and it, it stays in and doesn't dry out the brush. So this is what I was saying. You can still get, this is a brush that you can still get pretty good marks with. Look at those marks. That's now that I'm just now firing up the brush. So the ink is just fresh on there. Sometimes after I use it and the, the gravity just starts, that ink starts to well up a little bit for me. I think one of the other things that I'll show you here in a minute, but like the good thing about this one versus the, the Kurataki is the, your big thick lines are much juicier. Look, look at the difference. Like that is about as, you know, that's me giving a lot of pressure right there with the, with the, with the Kurataki. And this is me giving a lot of pressure with the Pentel. So because that ink is a lot more fluid and, 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 uh, wet, it definitely comes out and you get some way juicier lines. So depending on what I'm drawing or what, what I'm going for, I kind of pick between these two brushes. Um, but you can see it's still a really, really good brush for messing around and drawing and sketching. Now, Here's one problem that I have with this brush and uh, I hate, sometimes I hate using it on a fit, the covers and stuff because I'm, I move pretty fast and I ink pretty fast and the speedball ink dries pretty fast. The problem that I have with this, with this is look how wet that is. Um, it's, it really smears fast. So there's a lot of times I'm left-handed too. You guys see how funky I hold my brush. There's a lot of times I'll be pulling and all of a sudden I lift my hand up and, and I've got like little dabs of ink everywhere. See that, that one's still going. I got dabs of ink everywhere. So, but the cool thing about this one is you could really get some cool dry brush effects with this one as well and lay down some really big thick inks with that um, in areas. It does dry out kind of fast if you do too much big filling, so you gotta watch that. Now, I'm gonna do this one in the same block. Um, this is another version of the Pentel pocket brush, or the Pentel brush pen. It's just got the ink in the squeezable barrel, and you can see I messed this one all up, but um, you know, you fill up that little well, and then this one is really good. And they, they got a couple different sizes, but this one's good for laying down big, thick areas of black. 
and doing some really cool dry brush stuff, but also getting, you know, some pretty good precision with it. So, you know, for people who are used to using like a Cintiq stylus or something all day, this, this actually mimics that pretty well. So you can actually, uh, there's a lot less um, difference in the way that you'd be using your Cintiq or your traditional here. So this is another Pentel product, same ink as the pocket brush. Uh, what do we got next? All right, these are two that I am starting to fall in love with over the years. And these are two sizes of the Zebra brush pens. Um, uh, these are felt tip. One is fine and one is extra fine. Um, so this is the fine, but this is like the thicker one. Now these are really great. These, these really do mimic brush lines. Um, obviously they're not bristles. So if you're used to working with a brush, you've got to figure out how to manipulate these on certain like turns and things like that. But that's all just, you know, that's individual tastes and, and, and habits. But you can see here, it's a little felt tip, but it has a pretty, pretty fine point. Um, and this one is the one that's going to, you can see here, you can get some nice lines, nice little thin lines, right? And then, so if you want to come and get some contours. So you can really get in there and treat this like a brush or like a, this one is cool because it's a little bit more versatile. You can treat it like a brush. You can treat it like a marker. Um, and it just kind of works all those ways for you. Um, I use this depending on what, depending on what it is. If I need more like lines where I want some control and I want to ink less with my, you know, brush is a lot of like elbow movement for me where it's like stiff. But if I want to ink a lot more just hand or ink from the wrist, um, I might use this for, for some certain things. Um, again, I've seen some of my friends that are just, uh, absolute swordsmen with, with, uh, with these. So this is the medium and you can get some cool lines with this one, thin to thick. This is the extra fine one. This one is going to be a lot more controlled. So you can see here that it's a very smaller felt tip. Um, so a lot more controlled. You're going to be able to get really good lines, way more consistent. And you can see like when you go thick to thin, this one's a lot more, it's a little, it's a harder tip. So it's definitely more controlled. Um, and this one is a lot more, you can do some build up, build ups with it. And this is where I feel like this is like a mix between a brush pen and like a micron or something to where, you know, if I want to manipulate and really get in here and start building up lines without worrying about, um, being so pressure sensitive, this is a, this is a really good one. This is also how I usually, um, sign most of my pieces is with uh, this pen because it just has a nice consistent flow with that. So that's the fine and uh, extra fine maybe. Uh, either way, just think of it, the blue and the gray. Um, then there's a really dark gray or almost black one and that's really a fat juicy one. I would say be careful with these two as well. They do not dry very fast. I smear a lot of stuff with these. Um, what do we got next on deck? Uh, br 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 oh, of course. Here we go. This is the final inking tool. Um, this is obviously Windsor Newton Series 7, size 3. Um, there's variations in this. There's a Raf Raphael brush that everybody likes to use. Um, again, personal preference. I'm not a crazy tool junkie, so I, I don't ha I'm not leaning. It's easier for me to find these and get these. So I keep a bunch of these on, on lock because I'm doing this demo. I have a little older one. So, um, I didn't want to go through the whole washing process and super cleaning on, on my new loaded one. So I'm using this old one. So hopefully I can get it to a sharper tip, but you can see these are actual, um, you know, camel hair or whatever kind of, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to say what kind of hair it is. I just know it's individual bristle hair brushes and you dip this is the ones you we dip in a little inkwell off to the side and again ink is your choice i do super black or i do the koh Noor. but you can see that i get that on there and again you got just like all the other brushes now there's really no comparison for your inking tools to the actual real brush i mean you could I, I can pull off everything that I want to with any of these brush pens, but I always know when I go and pull this out 
it's like, oh, I mean business now. And it really is pretty cool to watch, you know, lines be able to pull out and really be able to play with variations and line and curves and things like that. And look how, I mean, I can go from this to that with the same tool. That's just, uh, it's, you're not going to get that fluidity and that range from those other tools um, with, with the precision that you are with these real brushes. Now, the thing is, you've got to take a lot better care with these brushes. And again, you guys know me. I'm not known for my precision drawing or inking like that. So I, I am really, all these tools are pretty forgiving for me because I like kind of sloppy, messed up stuff. So this is the Windsor Newton Series 7, size 3. A lot of people use the 2. Um, I like the 2 as well. I went to order some. Uh, they did not have as many in stock. I am going to lay down a lot of black here because I want to show you guys a few other things. Um, here's a little secret tip for filling in blacks. A lot of people use a brush. If you have big areas of black, uh, go to your drugstore, your CVS, your Walgreens, or whatever, and get yourself a big box of Q-tips. Um, I don't have any left here. Uh, I need to go get some myself. But get yourself, I think, a Q-tip. Dip that Q-tip in black and then do fill in your blacks. Uh, the really cool thing is it fills it in so evenly you won't see brush strokes. It's like lays it down perfectly. So um, another tip, keep a little glass of water to the side while you're inking. I'm going to do a whole inking tutorial on, on just the brush at some point. But today is more tool-centric. So um, while I let that dry... Uh, you know, I'll go back up to the pencil thing and say, um, any eraser will do. Obviously there's kneaded erasers. Um, you can see here, kneaded erasers, uh, are great. They work great and they don't leave, uh, you know, eraser dust everywhere. Um, but I find sometimes you can see here, it picks up some of the blue, it picks up some of the pencils and sometimes it'll pick up a little of the ink. And especially if your ink is not dry, you can see here, it's picking up a little bit of that ink, um, which I don't really want it to do. You can see it's starting to lift, lift it a little bit. Um, and depending on the ink too, that's going to matter. But also um, what I've been using for years is this uh, Statler uh, Mars plastic. Um, you know, this one leaves eraser dust, but it erases much better to me than the, than the needed eraser. So again, that's easy. That's an easy fix. Keep a brush around with you. Get that stuff off. That way you're not constantly doing your swiping the paper and getting your hand and greasy handed dirty because like when you draw in an ink and you're always got i've always got stuff all over my hand and it's going to get all nasty so uh two other things that i use on the regular um and that's going to wrap us up is uh white adding white now um if you're using the real brush there's stuff like um pro white this one's a good one here hold that up a little bit longer so pro white it's so like thicker white ink um, but these are also quick little things for sketches. We've got the Uniball Signo gel pen. Um, and you can see here, it's got a really fine little tip and lays that white down pretty good, right? And it, it has a little texture to it, so it's not perfect. And if you go too fast, it'll definitely um, break up a little bit. But I kind of like that sometimes because it just goes along with my flavor. Now, um, and then if you want bigger, bigger situations or you want to do some correcting. I think I tore, took the stickers off, but this is, uh, I think, Pesto, Presto, uh, Presto Whiteout Pen. It squeezes. You shake it up. And this one has a much bigger, bigger stroke. So it's not as easy to get like fine lines. So this isn't going to be your detail pen. But this is going to be, you know, if you really want to get in there and fix a thing that will help you white it out. You see there. Or, um, you know, if you wanna kinda get in there and, and do some texturing, you can really use this as that. You can see here we get these dashed, dotted lines. So I like to do rain. This is, uh, you know, if you do some rain on a panel or whatever, if you just wanna do some real cool texture stuff, um, just, Lightly squeeze, run this across paper, and you get some cool texture stuff with it. So, um, 
there you go. Uh, that's a little breakdown of my tools. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll try to jump in again sometime and, and update if I change any of my tools or if um, I do a deeper ink tutorial. We'll see how that goes. Um, but there you go. I hope this was helpful and um, I'll see you guys later.